I'd like to show you the small fire kit I carry in my get home bag. I keep my kit in this repurposed camera bag. On the back of the bag it has a molly strip so I can put it in my belt or attach it to the outside of my get home bag. It also has a little strap that could attach to, if I can open it here, one handed, attached to my wrist. And of course, easily identified as a fire kit. I have attached an Ultimate Survival Technology Sparky Mini Fire Starter. I got it at Walmart for under $8. It's really easy to use and it, you can use it one handed and the sparks are pretty impressive. Even a clod like me can use it. I also have a ranger band around the sparky. Um, my understanding is that these can be used for fire building too. The rubber is supposed to burn super hot and stays lit for a while even on snow which would really be handy where I live. I just thought I'd show you the spark that is emitted from the sparky. Pretty impressive huh? And really easy. Inside a kit too it's easily labeled as a fire kit so it's really easy to find. When you open it up We have some instructions here, and okay, just in case I forget or someone else is using my kit, I have how to build a campfire with really easy illustrations. Here it gives some ideas, and on the back, I have some reminders of natural tinder, such as birch bark. Um, conifer resin, cattail fluff, dry pine needles, etc. And I also have some hints on how to build a fire in the snow. So I always keep that with me. Okay, inside the camera bag is my fire kit. It is easily identifiable uh, and I've made it mine. If you want to know how to label your fire kit like this, I have some easy instructions at the end of this video. I am not using an Altoid tin. I'm using a tin from the dollar store that contained a little puzzle. Um, it was a buck because it was a dollar store. But it's a nice tin. To give you a comparison, here's an Altoid tin. Hold on just a minute while I take everything out of the fire kit. This is the inside of the tin. As you can see it has a match striker pad uh, glued on and I have a little knife. It actually came from a credit card utility tool. This little knife could be used to make a feathering for starting a fire or also is a base uh, to light the sparky, a nice hard surface to hit. Okay, here are the contents of my fire kit. Number one is, of course, my Bic lighter. I have to admit, this is what I turn to first for a fire. Then I also have two wet fires, which are excellent for starting a fire when it's wet. I put the expiration date, oops, there we go, on the back because they only last five years. So it's good to know when you purchase them so you know when they expire. Okay. Next up is in this package I have my stormproof matches right here and I have my strike anywhere starters. I'll show you those in a minute. I have these are trick birthday candles very hard to blow out. These are the magical birthday candles. As you can see it keeps on going. The easy way to put them out is in water. Great little um, OB tampons. A great source of tinder. It can also be used in first aid or for other purposes once a month. And I have some uh, 
four different alcohol swabs here. Uh, good for a fire starter. Also can be used for first aid, cleaning up a minor wound. I had room, so I put in a little cotton for tinder. And I have a big sheet of aluminum foil. Uh, this can be used for if the ground is wet for starting a fire as the base. It can also be used to reflect heat, um, protection overhead uh, when starting a fire, and of course for cooking. Okay, in this package I said was the Strike Anywhere starters, and this is what it looks like inside. I got the idea of these from watching Intense Angler's video. He explained how to make these using a Strike Anywhere match, wrapping them in strips of toilet paper, and then dipping them in candle wax. And it makes a great self-starting fire starter. Let me. These are supposed to burn from anywhere from three to seven minutes. And uh, I think they're really neat. So I included, I believe, four of them in the kit. There you have it. There's the contents of my fire kit. If you'd like to know how I made the label, um, stay tuned for a little prepper craft session. Hi, this is Prepper Porphyry, and I'm trying to practice building a fire. I think the hillbilly prepper gals say we need to practice practice for fire building, and I'm definitely doing it. It is a rather breezy day, but hot, especially to be sitting next to a fire. Before I sign out, I just wanted to read you something. It is from uh, a passage from the American Boys Handy Book of Camp Lore and Woodcraft, and it was written by Dan Beard and published in 1920. Nowadays, manual labor seems to be looked upon by everyone more in the light of a disgrace or punishment than as a privilege. Nevertheless, it is a privilege to be able to labor. It is a privilege to have the vim, the pep, the desire, and the ability to do things. Labor is a necessary attribute of the doer and those who live in the open. No one need attempt so simple a thing as the building of a fire and expect to succeed without labor. One must use the axe industriously in order to purpose for, in order, excuse me, to procure fuel for the fire. One must plan the fire carefully with regard to the wind and the inflammable material adjacent. One must collect and select the fuel intelligently. The shirk, the quitter, or the sidestepper has no place in the open. His habitat is on the Great White Way among the Babylonians of the big cities. He does not even know the joys of a fire. He never sees a fire except when some building is burning. His body is heated by steam radiators, his food is cooled in some mysterious place beyond his ken, and brought to him by subservient waiters. He will be dead and flowers growing on his grave when the real fires are just, fire makers are just attaining the full vigor of their manhood. Pretty powerful stuff. Um, I'll attach the URL if you want to download the whole text. It's free. Anyway, stay tuned if you'd like to learn how to customize your fire kit tin. Otherwise, this is Prepper Potpourri signing out. Please subscribe. Thank you. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is take electrical tape and wrap it all the way around the bottom of the tin. This gives it a really nice secure seal and makes your tin almost waterproof. Your next step is to find a fire graphic on the internet that is free that you can use, uh, import it into Microsoft Word, and then add word art for the text. In this case we're personalizing it for Shannon, a friend of my son, that's who I'm making the fire kit for. So it is about four inches across and two and three quarter inches vertically. Okay, now it's time to print it. For the labels we're using Post-it and they are 5395 template. Okay, we now have our printed graphics. Let's affix it to the actual tin.
Okay, now we're going to affix the label to the top of the box. There we go. In order to give it a waterproof finish and a nice shine, we're going to use glossy accents. You're simply going to squeeze this over the entire label. And I just use my finger and just smoosh it and put it on. That's all there is to it, and you just need to let it dry overnight. Okay, it's the next day. The top is nice and dry. All you have to do is add your electrical tape right around the edge, and you're done.